We think that being on defense is what keeps us safe, that wearing a shield of armor and fencing our heart with standards is what keeps us safe, but it's not. It's knowing your worth and truly believing it. It's walking in your standards and not just putting up a fence until someone walks over it. You gotta know and you gotta believe in your value. No standard can protect an unvalued prize. No defense can keep out what you truly want in. You gotta know that you are more than what other people say and treat you as. When you do that, you stop accepting less. Your strength isn't in your defense, it's in your confidence and belief of who you are. Hey y'all, it's your girl Abby and I'm back with another video. I am so excited to be in front of the camera right now because there is just so much to say. We are going to get straight into the topic as usual. We are talking about relationships, but more importantly, intimacy and the intimacy in which we crave within relationships and how to go about getting that intimacy in a way that doesn't harm yourself, your self-esteem, your worth, your livelihood, in a way that is essentially healthy. This word healthy goes around in our culture all the time, or actually the contrary goes around, toxic. We hear about toxic relationships, we hear about the effect of toxic relationships, but we don't necessarily hear how to go about finding, maintaining healthy relationships in our life. And I will say that I am no relationship expert. I am absolutely no relationship expert expert, but I do have experiences that I have drawn from. I have been through my fair share of toxic relationships. So these are the things that I've learned along the way. And so if that is something that you are interested in, if that is something that you can relate to, being triggered in relationships, being in cycles of negative and toxic relationships, then definitely stick around because we are going to get into all of that. And so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I kind of wanted to mention was I recently watched this or listened to this podcast. You guys probably already know this podcast because it's so good and it's so popular. It's called Diary of the CEO, Diary of a CEO by Stephen Bartlett. And I was so excited to hear the episode in which he just posted about sexual revolution. He had on an author talking about the sexual revolution and how women and casual sex are something that just don't mix and i know you probably heard that and are like there's probably two sides to it some people heard that and they're like super offended like excuse me and then some people heard that and literally their shoulders dropped literally they got a sigh of relief because they've been feeling it right and i could say that i definitely am in that box of women where when i heard that i was like yes Oh my goodness, thank goodness. Thank goodness someone is talking about it because I have been feeling it for years. And so that is definitely a podcast that you should check out if you are struggling with relationships and struggling with kind of going about gaining the intimacy that you crave, right? I think as women or even as people as in general, like we all crave intimacy. Right? We all crave the emotional, physical closeness with another human being. And so that is why we go about relationships. That's why relationships are at the center of our lives sometimes. If you are kind of in your 20s or your 30s, this is the time where you're trying to figure that out, where you're trying to lay the foundations for your later life. And a lot of that foundation has to do with the relationships in your life. And so I would definitely encourage you guys to check out that that podcast, listen to it, watch it because there are so many gems within it. Now, how does that relate to what we're talking about? Because I want to talk about the intimacy that we are craving. I want to talk about going about getting that intimacy without selling ourselves short. You know, a lot of times we get in relationships for good reasons, but the way we go about it isn't necessarily wise. The way we go about it, we always end up getting the short end of the stick, right? And there is a way, I truly believe there is a way that we can go about finding relationships, that we can go about finding closeness and intimacy with people in a way that doesn't in a way where we don't lose, in a way where we can be emotionally present, where our bodies can be present, where we aren't constantly triggered. For some reason, we think that being on defense is what keeps us safe. That wearing a shield of armor and fencing our heart with standards is what keeps us safe. But it's not. What keeps us safe is knowing your worth and truly believing in it. 
We hear this word so often, boundaries. It's a strong and powerful word, boundaries. But for some reason, we think that our boundaries is the only thing that keeps us safe. We think that because we have the idea, the idea of what a good boundary is, that that's all it takes. But there's actually some inner work, there's actually some root work that needs to be done to, to maintain those boundaries. Cool, we got the boundaries. Cool, we've reached the point where we can say, I know what I need and I know what I don't. I have the idea, amazing. That is a step and that you should be giving yourself a pat on the back for because sometimes we genuinely don't know what boundaries we should have, but you've gotten there. You know the boundaries you need to put you need to put in place, but you have to understand that your boundary, the boundary in itself isn't the defense. The boundary in itself is a reflection of how you see yourself. The boundary itself is a reflection of the worth you genuinely believe you have. Sometimes we put up boundaries without genuinely knowing our worth. Sometimes we put up this fence. Sometimes we guard our heart, we guard our life without knowing the worth that we have. So think of it like this. We put up this high fence with spikes at the top. Nobody's coming in unless you meet this criteria and that criteria and no one's coming in. I told you you're not coming in. Don't try and come in you. Don't even think about it. Oh, you better not think about it, right? That's the boundary, okay? Now, the problem with that Okay. The problem with that boundary is if we don't genuinely believe that's that what is on the inside, the other side of that fence is valuable, is a prize, then it's just a front. Then it's just all talk. What is it? What's that saying? All bark, no bite. You got to have the bite, baby. You got to have the bite. You got to know that what is inside that fence is valuable because that is what allows you to maintain your boundaries. That is what allows you to actually walk in alignment with your boundaries. How many times have we gotten into relationships and we're like, um, this is my boundary. Like maybe you're saying it in your head. This is my boundary and I'm not crossing it. Until they tell you what you want to hear. Until they maybe touch you in a way that feels good. Until they buy you something that makes you feel nice. Then all of a sudden the boundary is gone. Where to go? You know what I'm saying? Like that is where we end up messing up where it's like we had the idea. We had the idea, but it didn't have roots. And I'm just here to say that sometimes it doesn't have roots because we don't genuinely believe it. It's like we like the idea of it, but we're unable to bring it into fruition because it genuinely doesn't come from a place within. And so I want to talk about how we can build those roots, right? And it's important to know that these roots are not something that we just make out of thin air, that we just orchestrate for ourselves. You have to know the root of what love is. You have to know the root of what love truly is. And the only way that you know what love is, is by going back to the roots and to the basis of it. There is a verse in the Bible, right? I'm going to pull it up here. Y'all, this is my red book that honestly, one day I'm going to tell you guys about it because it's a part of my testimony. Like, honestly, this book is, is great, but I want to read like a verse for those of you that don't know, there's a verse in the Bible that clearly describes what love is. And so whenever you're questioning, man, this doesn't necessarily feel right, but I can't get my finger on it. I don't know what it is about this situation that's making me feel off, but I can't quite get a finger on it. You need to come back to this verse and you need to read it out loud read it in your heart, feel it, and now compare it with your reality. Is what I'm experiencing a reflection of love, right? Here's the definition, let's get into it. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13 verse four to seven. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. That is the verse you need to go back to. That is the passage you need to remind yourself of. You need to remind yourself of when you feel like your boundaries are swaying, right? 
What I'm truly looking for is love and intimacy. In this moment, it doesn't feel like it. In this moment, I have the boundaries set in place, but I don't have the roots. The roots come from the word of God. The roots come from Jesus. The roots come from the truth, right? Take all that out. If you're not religious, whatever, you can throw that out. The roots come from the truth. And the truth is written here. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous and boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. That is something we have to actually talk about. It does not demand its own way. A lot of times we will get in relationships. Okay, I'm talking to the women here. And we will literally give up ourselves, give up our bodies, give up our standards for someone else's way, for what someone else wants. And I think it's time where we literally take that power back and we say, no, what I'm looking for is something genuine. What I'm looking for is something deeper than what this moment can offer me. And so it does not matter if I put up my boundary and I act in it. It doesn't matter if I disagree with what you want. This is what I know to be best. This is what I know to be true, right? And so you got to get back to the roots of things. You got to get back to the roots. Now, in this book, there is also a subheading on boundaries. And so I'm curious to see what it has to say. Okay, page 36, boundaries. 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 That's what we need. Boundaries. Okay, why I need boundaries. So basically what this book does is it's like, as you can see, it gives you subtitles like boredom, boundaries, and then it will basically just give you like a whole bunch of scripture related to that topic. So honestly, we're just going to read and see what they have to offer. So boundaries, why do I need boundaries? And the first verse that comes up is Psalms 119.35. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. That is the root of our boundaries. Our boundaries are the commands that God has for us and for our lives. That is where our true happiness is found. But we have to genuinely believe that. We have to genuinely know that. Otherwise, those boundaries are just a front. Otherwise, those boundaries is not really boundaries. It's just, you know, a show. Like, ooh, look at me. I've got all these boundaries and I've got all these knowledge, all this knowledge, but I don't know how to apply it. But I don't really know if I believe it, right? Like it's all a show. It's all a show. And so guarding yourself with the truth, building your relationship with God, having a spiritual relationship is super important. It's super, super important. Another thing I wanted to share with you guys, if you were on my Instagram, you would have probably seen me post this YouTube video and I'll definitely link it in the, in the description box below because I think everyone needs to go watch that. Basically in this video, the, uh, I think her name is Heidi. She basically made a whole video on neuroticism, but some of you might hear neuroticism is like, okay, I'm definitely not neurotic. Like, I know I'm not crazy, but not neuroticism as a diagnosis, right? Like there is a differentiation that she makes. There's neuroticism that can be diagnosed via the DSM-5, which is like the book of psychology and their diagnosis, diagnoses and the requirements in which a person requires to meet that diagnosis. But there are also traits of neuroticism, similarly to when we talk about um, narcissists, right? Like we always, we're always talking about narcissism, but it isn't necessarily that we're talking about narcissism in a sense of its diagnosis, but the traits that can be present in everyday people. We all have levels of these traits. And so in that, in this video, she talks about neuroticism. She describes your triggers, right? Say, for example, you are talking to someone, you're in a new relationship and they say something that triggers you. All of a sudden, you feel like going silent. You feel like going mute your body the blood is rushing you feel numb you're tingling it's like oh my god i'm genuinely triggered right now i can't even speak i'm triggered right now oh my god right say for example you're losing your hair right you're losing your hair and you start using a, a, a new hair growth shampoo and so you're putting on the shampoo you're using it you're following the di directions but your hair's still falling out and so you say okay well i guess i need to try a new hair loss shampoo and so you get another hair loss shampoo but your hair is still falling out right neuroticism is when you keep using that shampoo and you keep changing shampoos it's not the shampoo that you need 
The shampoo is not going to help you from your hair loss. Sometimes the hair loss is something visceral. Sometimes the hair loss comes from a deeper root. Maybe it's malnutrition. Maybe it's a lack of nutrients. Maybe you need to take supplements. But what is neuroticism is when you keep searching for different things, the shampoos, the, the all these different things that is not going to actually solve the problem. Maybe it will stop it for a month. You get a good month of no hair loss, but it's not actually getting to the cause of the issue. And so a lot of times we do this in our life. A lot of times we will sit on the mat and we will meditate. A lot of times we will write down a bunch of affirmations in our journal to fill us up. There's nothing wrong with doing these things, but you have to understand that those are tools and not actually going to solve the root issue, right? The triggers come from the root. Okay. The fear comes from a root. You need to get to that root. How you get to that, we're going to talk about it in a different video. Maybe I, I might not even have the credentials to really guide you through that. Cause like that is, that is spiritual work. That is therapy. That is community. These are things that you can't necessarily sit and talk about. Like, yes, it's important to talk talk and express, but these are things that you have to go out on your own and you've got to find on your journey. And the only thing that I can do for you is encourage you to do that, is encourage you to actually get to that route, to not be afraid of it, right? To walk on that journey with God and know that he will fill you with the strength and courage that you need to walk on that journey. Because a lot of times it is scary and I get why we avoid it. And I get why we put up these boundaries without getting to the root. It's scary. It's scary to actually look at ourselves. It's scary to hold the truth sometimes, right? But just understand that wellness practices, talking, sitting, meditating, breath work, these things are so great. These things are so useful, but it doesn't get to the root. I want us to get to the root. I want us to genuinely heal ourselves. I want us to actually start walking on that journey, right? Know that healing is not this fix, right? We say heal ourselves, but it isn't necessarily that we take something. We take an ointment and we're healed. It's a journey. It's genuinely a journey that we walk on throughout our life. I think that's, I feel like there's more that I wanted to say. So like, let me gather myself a little bit. And then, yeah, because I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so the gist of it is know what love is so that you don't get confused by what it's not, right? And the way to know what love is, is by going to scripture, is by seeing what Jesus says, how he guides us, the way that he tells us to live our life. He is the true embodiment of love, if you look at the teachings and how he goes about life, is love is unconditional, right? Speaking of unconditional love, I read something in my Bible study that I thought was like so beautiful and I wanted to share it here. Um, the verse, for those of you that want to follow along, is Corinthians verse 4, or 2 Corinthians verse 4 to 10. Um, or sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 10. And it goes... We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. And I just thought that was so beautiful because what does it mean to, to carry the death of Jesus? Jesus died on the cross for us sinners, for people that didn't believe in him, that mocked him, that, you know, called him a false prophet, right? Right. Can you imagine the God that we worship today? People called him a false prophet. They put him on a cross and they crucified him. They watched him die in public, right? But Jesus did that for the love that he had for us, right? And so that is the truest expression of unconditional love. To die for someone, to give your life up for someone is the truest, most grandest form of of expressing your love. There is no way that you can express your love deeper than dying for someone. And so the death of Jesus, the unconditional love that he showed us through his death is what we carry with us, right? The death that represents the unconditional love, we carry that death so that the life can be shown through us, so that the love can be shown through us, so that we can remember what love is. And I think when we're putting up our boundaries, 
when we're going about connecting with people, we have to carry the death of Jesus in our body, right? Because that is what reminds us what love truly is. The love that God has for you, okay? And the love that you need to start seeing about yourself. You got to start seeing the creation that God created you to be. He created you with love. You got to start believing it. When you start believing that, when you truly know it, everything starts to flow from there. Everything starts to flow from there. You can put up those boundaries without second guessing it. You can put up those boundaries without saying, oh, that's the boundary. And I know it's what I should be doing, but I want to do something else. Mm, No. That's not even going to be, I mean, there's always temptation, but that's not even going to be, that thought is not even going to have a chance because you know what love is. And so carry the death of Jesus, the love that he showed us in your body and remember what unconditional, true agape love is so that it can be reflected in your life and the way that you lead it, the way that you treat yourself and the way that you treat others, okay? That's all I have for you guys. Now, housekeeping things. As you guys know, I have a newsletter. I need you guys to sign up. Put your email in the sign up. Subscribe to this channel. Okay, that's first and foremost. From first and fo- what is it? First and foremost. Subscribe to this channel. Like this video so that I can keep making more. Okay. And then you're going to go down to the description box. You're going to scroll. I think it's going to be the first one. I think so. And then you're going to click that link and you're going to sign up for the Substack newsletter. Why are you going to do that, you might ask? Because I'm going to be giving and writing you guys these little blurbs, right? You see these videos, it's important, you're taking it in, pop, 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 pop. But maybe sometimes you need notes. Maybe sometimes you need a little something that you can carry with you throughout the week. That's exactly what you're going to get in the newsletter. And it's going to be sent straight to your inbox. I will not be bombarding you with promotional stuff. I don't even know what I'd be promoting, but I'm not going to just bombard you with BS. Okay. You're going to get something that you need. And so sign up if that is something that you are interested in. As usual, follow me on my socials, Instagram, TikTok, A-B-I-G-X-R-L. And that's it. I will see you guys in another video. I want to thank you for getting this far in this video. It genuinely means like the most to me, like genuinely want to give you a big old hug and kiss. Okay. That's between me and you. I love you. Thank you for being here and I will see you in another video. I love you guys. Peace and love and bye for now.